I pulled out my energy bills from last year, and I made a list of questions that I have for Sean. He's the energy advisor from the Energy Trust of Oregon. He's going to be here any minute to do a home energy review for me for free. If you're an Oregon customer of PGE, Pacific Power, Cascade Gas, or Northwest Natural, you too can get a free home energy review. It's easy. Just call Energy Trust or go online and schedule an appointment. And relax. You don't have to clean your house or anything. They've seen dirty dishes before. Trust me. There he is. Hi. Hi. I'm Sean from Energy Trust. Hi, Sean. I've been expecting Hi. you. Come good. on in. Good to meet you. You too. All right. So anything particular we're looking to do? Reason for calling? Absolutely. Yeah, I got this, um, made this list after I talked to the service rep who I talked to, and okay. the first thing on it is that fireplace over there. It, okay. it, it kind of breathes. And I just wonder if I have uh, adequate insulation everywhere. Sure, absolutely. Great. Do we want to take a look at the furnace? Um, yeah, furnace and water heater. And oh, yeah, That'd it's downstairs great. in the garage. Perfect. Okay. okay. Those would be great places to start. Okay. Okay. So we'll just take a quick look at the furnace and the water heater and just the general condition of the ductwork um, that is connected right here. This is outside the house. So we want to just take a quick look at it. First things first, great furnace. Furnaces can be a little bit expensive to install. So this is a non-issue in a good way. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, kind good, of, I'm good, pleased with it, yeah. Good piece off our checklist. So some of the things that we're looking for are areas of potential leakage. The furnace is actually pushing air into the ductwork, into the house. So if there's leakage out here, it's considered leakage in the ductwork also. So there is, I mean, I definitely can feel nice warm air coming out here. There's oh actually quite a bit of heat right, right here. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had no idea. So it's unsealed and uninsulated. Um, I, I can see where there are some areas uh, where there is duct tape on it, and duct tape is not necessarily what we want to use on ducts. <laughs> say, say that one more time, duct tape, duct tape you don't yeah, want to use on ducts? It just, it's just a period of time before it'll just fall apart. Oh, wow. Furnace filters up here, you change them on a regular basis? I do. I, I buy a year's worth at a time, and okay. I mark the date, and I change them at the first of each quarter. Oh, yeah. That's a nice color. <laughs> a gray. <laughs> a nice gray. <laughs> so the easy way to tell if it's really plugged up, is just take your light and see what you can see. And the answer is, it is time. So I can switch it out for you real quick. I think the carrier says in its instructions to change it every, every quarter. So are you saying that that might be too often? It may be too infrequent. Oh, too infrequent. Right. We oh. would say check it every couple of months okay. and then change it as needed. But again, like I say, every house acts a little bit differently. You had replaced the water heater, I, I presume, I recently? I did have to replace the water heater. Okay. And, um, you know, I've heard about water blankets, water heater blankets, mm -hmm. but not to put them on the later models. Yeah, we can tell, and that is true, we can tell what the temperature is on the outside of the water heater, and it is pretty warm. It's 70 degrees is what that says. Mm -hmm. So it may not have a lot in the way of insulation on it, but that is absolutely correct, is you generally want to check with the supplier or the manufacturer mm -hmm. and see if they prescribe putting a blanket on it. Um, a lot of times the water pipes, the ones coming out here, are exposed and they have zero insulation on them. So we yeah. would say that they should be insulated. And uh, on um, both of them? Because I was thinking yeah. about that too. Yeah. So on both of those? Exactly. So that's showing 80 degrees. Oh my gosh. And that one is showing 83 degrees. Now so, I thought one was the cold water coming in yes. and one's the hot water going out. <laughs> that is correct. But the cold water uh, pipe dips so far down inside of that tank that it is actually it starts pulling temperature backwards after it's sat for just a little bit. So well, where to from here then? After let's let's take a look at the crawl space, being how we're talking about the ductwork, and we'll see if there's any issues with the ductwork under the house. Okay, okay. perfect. This way. Oh, hey, Sean. These are two of the dampers that I keep closed because I don't like to um, you know, heat this up down here at all. Oh, okay. Well, we should take a look at these anyway. So what we want to do is have this open slightly um, and we want to check the connection of the vent to the house itself. And this is an excellent example of where it is not real well connected. And when I put my hand down here, I can actually feel cool air coming out from under the house. Oh, yeah. And it's not exactly where we want to have air coming into the house either. So we want to have that really well sealed. Typically, that is considered part of the air sealing of the house. Now we can go continue and, and take a look at the, the ductwork from the 
underside of the house. So some of the things that we're looking for in here, where there is, it's called ghosting, where there's a gray area on insulation, it can either show us leakage on ductwork. Oh, right um, there. Exactly. There. This area right in here, you That's see, healthy. Yeah, you see how dark it is. So a lot of times where the plumbing has been punched through, which is this area, uh, there is definitely potential for air leakage in there. Some of the areas that we can see on the ductwork as a good example are, it's gray right here, right where it comes off of the plenum for, mm -hmm. the, for the furnace. I think the plenum is, it, it is a case of they'll never see it. It's, it's underneath here under the, uh, under the plenum itself. So uh, I, I don't believe it, it was ever originally wrapped up. From when they first built the house, you mean? Yeah, quite possibly. Wow. So I'm losing heat right away from when the right hot the, air comes out of exactly the furnace, right. just right immediately. Off, right off the bottom of the furnace. Oh, uh -huh. man. Yeah. Gene, where you said you were concerned that this area is extra cool, well, here's a good potential reason why uh -huh. this insulation needs to be strapped up nice and tight against the bottom of the house. Sean, this is the, the area where those steps are at, and the air just comes gushing through here upstairs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times on multi-level houses or tri-level uh, that the backs of the stairs are really leaky, potentially. Is there anything else down here? No, I think we're good. Uh, we should probably take a look at the attic. would be a great next maneuver. Excellent. Okay. All right. So we'll just take a quick look in the attic. We're looking for, say, weather stripping on this hatch. This is an outside door in essence. And just put like a vinyl type uh, weather stripping on it. And I have some downstairs I can show it to you too. All right. The insulation level is not bad. It's not perfect. It could handle a little bit more. Code has changed since the period of time that this house was built. The wall in here looks good. Uh, the insulation looks like it's it's well tucked up against the against the wall. It's not falling away or anything. Okay. And then the uh, bath fans look like they're connected well too. Uh, they're venting all the way to the outside of the house. Oh, great! Not just into the attic. Exactly. Okay. We don't want the moisture moving into the attic. We want to move it all the way out. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, one other thing I would have a contractor take a look and see it that there is adequate roof venting in here. There may be, we may be a little bit shy. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. So hatch is back in place. Um, just want to make sure that it's sealed up well. Oh, I was going to say, uh, as long as we're right here uh, in the master bath, mm -hmm. is we can take a look at some opportunities possibly to save some water. We have shower heads that we install also as part of the, as part of the visit. So free home review and, and free stuff. Absolutely. My showers only are five minutes or less as it is. So is that really going to save me a lot? A typical brand new shower head, if even if it came as new fixtures, are about two and a half gallons a minute. Oh. This is typically uh, around a half a gallon less per minute. Uh, this one is uh, 1.75 gallons per minute. Well, there's both sides of it. There's the water reduction as well as the, the heating of the hot water. Well, I sure hope that feels good. We'll check it out. Oh my, that looks great. Yeah, and it's adjustable spray on it. I mean, these these definitely have a good uh, have a good rating and a good flow on them. So I think the last thing to do is to talk about the fireplace. Isn't that right? Uh, sure, we'll take a look at it. Oh, that's right. Real quick, um, since we had talked about it earlier, the uh, cold air return, right, just right. the placement of it. Mm -hmm. It just seems like it's in a good position. Oh, hey, while we're right here. Um, you know, between this light and that light, you know, they're the only two that I haven't switched out to compact Good. fluorescents. Uh -huh. I've just kind of been waiting until they burn out. Perfect, because we have them and we can just install them today as part of the part of the visit. Oh, just right now? Sure. Yeah, oh, we can do it great. Right okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Well, we can come back up to that. Um, so I was going to ask you about this fireplace because it's so drafty. Here's that um, thing oh, that, that I was vent. mentioning. It is that bypass that we saw that mm -hmm. that in feed for the for the fireplace. Right. Okay. So it's just freezing cold air coming in here all the time. But I think if they do the pressure test on the house, they're really going to say, "Let's just close that guy up." And, okay. And then they'll leave this looking this way, but they'll take care of it from below. Right. Right. You can okay. seal it up from underneath. Yeah. That makes sense. Perfect. So let's take a quick look at the fireplace. Just oh, so yeah, the damper. Oh yeah. Just peel that right back. Um, but but there's no gaskets on these guys, so even when it is so-called all closed up, that there's still potential for air to move out of here. Now, um, I'm pretty sure I had the damper closed completely. Closed I'm, up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it looks like it is closed up. 
um, which is kind of surprising the amount of air that's moving in and out of it. There's a pillow um, that you can inflate and actually park inside of those guys and might make it a, it will typically make it more airtight. Gosh, I'm really uh, excited to look at this review, Sean. Okay, perfect. So what did you discover? All right, so we found a few areas that you were concerned about. Mm -hmm. One was... After the 45 minute visual inspection, Sean looked at my energy bills. He figured that my average monthly bill was a bit higher than it probably should be for my home's square footage. He gave me materials on what I could do myself. For instance, on exterior walls, I can install switch and outlet cover gaskets. I've already installed a programmable thermostat. He suggested two tests that I should run. A blower door test that checks the air pressure of the house and identifies air leaks. And a duct pressure test to see where the air ducts need to be resealed. There are plenty of places where that's a problem, starting in my garage. Sean showed me a list of trade allies familiar with the Energy Trust programs who can do those tests as well as the repairs. Several of them can also do a comprehensive analysis Anybody of my home's guys, energy use and air um, quality. Oh, potential is a uh, home performance with Energy Star, which is this program, which is more extensive testing. They do a uh, whole house approach. They check for moisture levels. Uh, carbon monoxide levels, make sure everything is safe and burning correctly, everything is in really good condition. Sean completed the worksheet of his findings, and then he got to the money part. This is the sheet that we'll actually leave behind. Okay. So this one will have the actual recommendations or the things that we found specific to your house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this one, you can just refer to as, if it's checked off on this one, then this is what the incentive amount is available per each of the items that specifically apply to your house. Now, how do I get these incentives? Is it this is you? actually through Energy Trust, mm -hmm. and uh, we will, you just do an application with us, and we just send out checks, actually. It's actually right. cash back. Yep. I like that. I'll want to also apply for the state's tax credits for any of the work that I have done. After replacing my incandescent light bulbs with compact fluorescent ones, he was off to his next appointment. All right, Gene. Very good to meet you. You too. You Thanks too. for having me in. Thank and you. too, if you need any additional help, just give us a call. Uh, also, just take a look at our website at energytrust.org. It's really helpful also. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Take Great. care. Thanks, Sean. Okay. I'm Gene Bauman, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. I'm an everyday gal, making my everyday choices count, and you can too. I better go get that list and see what I can work on this afternoon. Bye-bye.